Labor Party recently announced that if they were elected at the next federal election, they would introduce a policy whereby franking credit refunds, currently allowable to all SMSFs, would no longer be allowable to SMSFs who were purely in pension phase and did not have at least one member receiving some sort of age pension. This has obviously had a great effect on this sector and joining me today is Kevin Bungard from CLASS and we're going to talk about this issue. Hi Darren. Thanks for your time today Kevin. There have been a lot of estimation as to how many people this would affect, you know. Yeah. In, in, in what you see, how many people do you think, or how many funds I should say? Would, do you think this would affect? I think, yeah, a lot of focus, and, and particularly, I guess, from the analysis put out by the Labor Party, is, is focused on the direct impact. Who does it impact, uh, you know, immediately? But I think broadly, it impacts uh, every self managed super fund because eventually they're all going to be in pension phase. I mean, that's the whole point of having them is at some point you're going to be drawing down a pension. And so you're saving this money uh, so that you can draw down on it in retirement. And uh, a portion of that, a good portion of that, is actually coming from dividends from uh, Australian stocks. Um, it's well known that there is a, a preference amongst uh, self-managed super funds for particularly uh, dividend and frank dividend paying stocks on the ASX. Um, and, and that's because they want that income stream uh, to flow. Uh, uh, we actually did an analysis as part of a benchmark report in December of uh, pensions um, and their preferences around assets as well. Um, and the, uh, about 80% of the uh, SMSFs that are in pension phase are holding some level of, of, of ASX equities. So, um, uh, and again, that preference is about 50% in accumulation phase. So there's a kind of a shift. Um, now, the overall asset allocation is still about 30 odd percent. Um, but uh, the, the number of funds holding uh, securities, it, it rises. So realistically, it's about 600,000. It's, it's over a million SMSF members who are impacted yeah. because ultimately they're all going to want to draw a pension. Yeah. And this is a, a significant crimp on that saving. And I think the other thing to keep in mind um, is there's about nearly 2 million members who are in APRA funds who have a balance of over 200,000. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, the general idea, you know, the different uh, debates about what level you, you, you should think about maybe a self-managed super fund is right for you. But uh, a number of those two million members who are in those APRA funds, as they get closer to retirement age, uh, may look to start self-managed super funds. So you're also talking about another, you know, not the existing million trustees, but potentially another uh, it's two million uh, super members who, who might want to start a self-managed super fund someday. And effectively that choice would be removed for them under this, um, when you look at the impact yeah. of uh, the, uh, it has on your income. Yeah. Now you mentioned that you do some data collation around your clients to, to have a look at trends, investment trends and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, when we're talking about dollar amounts, yep. uh, what sort of impact is it likely to have there, do you think? Um, so it, it's obviously going to depend on the degree to which your portfolio is, is holding Australian equities. Um, the average in a self managed super fund is about sort of 30 uh, odd percent. Um, uh, what that does is by the time you look at some of those assets are generating income, some are not. Uh, so all, all up, if you kind of do some analysis on, you know, typically what income are you getting or where's that income coming from, it's about a 20 percent hit to the income that you're getting from the self managed super fund uh, that this policy would have on a, 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 a member that was in pension phase. So that's a significant. If you're drawing uh, down a, a pension of 60,000, 80,000 and losing 20% um, uh, of, your, of your income, uh, that's significant. Yeah. Um, and, and it's worth keeping in mind that there's still a, a number of, uh, you know, people like to think of self-managed super funds as, 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 as the, the larger funds, yeah. uh, but there are a lot of um, members who are still going to be drawing, even if it's a, a million dollar fund, uh, that means that the member's got a $500,000 balance. So um, uh, the, the, the pension they're going to be drawing from that, they may still be drawing a age pension. Um, so in which case maybe at, at the smaller end, they're going to actually still get that credit. Um, but some of the analysis that we've done also indicates that if you're in the threshold there, you could be in a situation where um, you've got more in your savings because you, you've saved for your retirement as the, the government wants you to do, yeah. uh, but you'll actually be getting less income because you're not getting the age pension and now you've lost 20% of that income and you're actually getting less than someone who, who has less money but is getting the age pension and is getting the franking credit. Yeah. Uh, that, that doesn't sound like a, a, a fair outcome. Yeah, no. 
Uh, you mentioned before, obviously, the bias towards Australian equities, and of course, one of the big attractions is the franking credits. If this policy does come into play, do you envisage that well, there will be a shift towards asset allocation and maybe potentially going into more risky asset classes? Uh, I think it's a definite possibility. When you look at, as a share investor, you know, what are you looking at? You know, one of the things you will look at is that income is one thing and then the other is, is capital gain. Uh, and when you look at total shareholder return, when you're looking at comparing stocks, um, one of the things is that it, certainly there's over the last few years, international equities would be performing better on a total shareholder return than the Australian securities. Does that you know, mean that people will shift from investing in ASX stocks to overseas stocks because they'd rather chase capital gain and not uh, have that kind of impact from this change in policy um, and a shift away from those uh, ASX uh, 200 stocks that have a history of paying dividends and frank dividends. Yeah. If all of a sudden I'm going to lose 20% uh, of my income, what does that do to uh, that, that allocation of investments? Um, do they shift into property? Is that an outcome we mm -hmm. want where, you know, potentially I, I'm chasing gain, uh, but it, it maybe is it maybe not the best thing to be doing in a, in a pension phase fund. So I think the implications in terms of what people do with their investments, the implications of what that means to the, the ASX and the, the investment market in Australia generally is, it could be quite, quite significant. You mentioned the ASX, you know, a lot of people, or not a lot of people really have talked about the flow on effects to several different service providers out there. You know, is there gonna be a significant impact to say somebody like the ASX? I, I, I think it's a definite possibility and I think what's the impact on the companies? Do companies need to change their policy in terms of um, you know, someone like a Telstra who um, I think has been a bit of a darling with the investors because of that dividend um, and certainly uh, in our analysis uh, uh, I think it's close to 50% of um, uh, SMSFs are holding Telstra. Yeah. Uh, you know, what does that mean in terms of that preference for, 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 for companies like that who, uh, and what does it mean for them? Do they have to change what they're doing? Um, do, they, do they have to focus on growth and switch from what they're doing in terms yeah. of currently? Uh, so the implications, not just for the ASX in terms of the level of investment, um, but also for the companies that are, that are on the ASX, you know, do the yeah. banks have to change what they're doing uh, around dividend policies? Yeah. Um, uh, because if, if the SMSFs, um, they hold a significant proportion of the capital in some of those companies, mm. if they shift it, um, what does it mean to those companies? The class is obviously an administration provider to SMSFs. Software provider. Software provider, <laughs> I'm sorry, to SMSFs. What implications does it have for you guys from an administration point of view and a, and a fund management point of view, I suppose? You uh, look, from a, from a software administration point of view, the impacts are, are, you know, are not that significant in terms of, for, for example, some of the other super reform changes like administering caps uh, yeah. around the 1.6 uh, and the transfer balance account, uh, they were much more complicated. So this is, this is simpler to, 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 to implement. Uh, it does mean that we would need to be, and the advisors will need to be more aware of uh, whether the uh, superannuation fund member uh, is also drawing an age pension because that has implications as to whether or not uh, you will be getting those franking credits um, if this policy is implemented. Yeah. Um, and so uh, that, that would be an additional item that everybody's got to track. Um, uh, but I, I think, you know, obviously that wouldn't change that often. So once it was in place, it wouldn't be that onerous. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that it's not one of the changes where we go, oh, the administration of this is a nightmare. Yeah. It's more of, wow, how is this fair? You know, why is it that a, um, a, a member who has uh, $200,000 in, um, you know, their Qantas super account or in their CBA super account or um, so on, um, or, you know, even one who has a million dollars in their MLC account or whatever, is going to get those credits because there's enough there to offset it so they will get that yeah. credit. Um, whereas if that same investor takes that money and has it in a self-managed super fund, they won't get it. it, it, it that, that doesn't seem fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this is proposed policy right now. The Labor government hasn't even, well, the Labor Party hasn't even been voted into no, the federal parliament just yet. 
Um, do advisors need to do anything about it now for their clients? Is it too soon to, to start preparing? For I think it is too soon. I think we've seen the political parties change policy, particularly as they get closer to elections, um, as they start to do their own polling and see what the impact of their policy is, is going to, to be. Um, I think they're emboldened at the moment, given the by-election wins. Um, and so uh, at the moment, they're, they're backing this policy and they're, they're sort of pursuing it. But we, we don't even have an election date yet. So yeah. um, I think um, the more the most logical way that this would be implemented would be it would be implemented around the financial year boundary. Yeah. Um, so hopefully they would be uh, thoughtful enough to, to give people um, an opportunity to then look at what they're doing around their asset allocations and reallocate them appropriately if they needed yeah. to. Or even, you know, and I think this is the, the other option, is that you might see self-managed super funds being wound up. You might be seeing people rolling the money into the industry fund because they can go into an industry fund, um, invest in the same ASX stocks mm. and uh, actually get that um, uh, rebate, so uh, get the get the, the credit. So. Yeah. Um, I think again that there's potential um, things that you might be able to look at close to when we understand the policy. Uh, for all we know, they might change the policy and, and uh, do something around the APRA funds as well. Who knows at this point? Um, uh, I think if you go too early, you can sometimes leave yourself in, a, uh, in more of a mess than if you, if you hadn't. A good example is when the 1.6 um, cap was proposed um, and, and people realised they were going to have to roll money back into the accumulation phase. Uh, there were a number of people who started thinking about should I sell assets now, get that capital gain before that policy yeah. comes in. Uh, as it was when the policy finally came out, it included capital gains tax relief and yeah. so people didn't need to, to jump the gun there. Uh, and if people had gone and done that beforehand, maybe they sold an asset that was a, a good performing asset and they, they shouldn't have done that. Yeah. So I think uh, at this stage, yeah, it is worth uh, that note of caution that this is policy only. There's a, there's a fair bit of water. It's already been changed a couple of times around yeah. the, um, yeah. the pension. Uh, and, and other bits and pieces. So I think we'll, we'll see how that evolves, but uh, it certainly doesn't seem like um, great policy. And I'm sure as people understand the impact, not just on the SMSFs, but anyone else who might think about opening an SMSF in the future, uh, it's, it's not a great thing for Australians. Okay, thanks for your time today, Kevin. Thanks, Darren.